in this video I will go over not the whole packet because that would take too much time. But I want to go over some questions on this packet that I gave you at the end of the year that will help you the most. Um, so I'm just going to select some. Like number two, I really like a lot. What is the speed of a 2.5 kilogram mass that has fallen freely from rest? So sometimes you're given things not with a number, but with words like from rest. That's VI equals zero. And you're going to underline the distance of 12 meters. And it feels like, well, they didn't really give me enough, but it did happen on Earth. So remember, that's positive 9.8 meters per second squared when you're falling make that positive when you're going down it's positive up it's negative and now you have everything you need because don't forget too that you're looking for a speed so you always write down what you're looking for and what they gave you so it's one two three four vf vi d and a so we use vf squared the fit equals vi squared whoops plus two ad i made a classic mistake i didn't square um, and there you go. You can work out the math. This is on a lot of number three is on a lot of uh, regions. Is you've got to know two things. You've got to know that acceleration on a d versus t or a v. It looks like this on a d versus t, but also know it looks like that on a v versus t. It's straight, constant acceleration. So a smoothly increasing slope for a d versus t and a straight slope for a v versus t. Definitely really important what else can i do here here's another example of a dropping problem but it happens on the moon so you don't know the acceleration so you make it unknown it falls two meters there's your d there's your t and the fit is d equals vit plus one half at squared this one's a tough one this is not a typical problem at all a displacement just remember displacements the distance between the distance between start and finish, it doesn't matter what happens in between the start and the finish. Uh, start pointing to the finish. This is a tough one. So it goes five meters up, four meters east, two meters south. And there's the start to finish, the hypotenuse. The top is four. The bottom is four. The um, This is two. So this part over here must be three. Again, this is not typical. And this is a three, four, five triangle. That's a tough one. 11 very infrequently you're asked a question about kilograms meters and that's probably pretty it pretty much it kilograms meters and newtons you've got to know that, that a kilogram is 2.2 pounds and here's how you deal with these kinds of problems a paper clip cross don't try to find the right answer cross out the r ridiculous um, answer like this is a thousand so a thousand times 2.2 no definitely not this this cross out this first one again a million times 2.2 cross that out now what about this over here this is way too small because this is this is a millionth that's what 10 to the negative six is so a millionth of a pound no so we'll cross that as well so you'll you'll have three that are too high or three that are too low or um you just pick take out the extremes and what you're left with is this and that's a paper clip Egg is dropped once again. Dropped at vi equals zero. Uh, the distance we're looking for d equals question mark. Remember, ten to the one is is just ten meters. So it happened on the Earth. A is nine point eight meters per second squared. The distance is the unknown. And a third story. Oh, this one's tricky. Third story building. Um, this is actually not even a motion question. It's do you know what a third story uh, window? How many meters that would that be? Let's cross out the ridiculous third story. That's you know three flights up. Is it a hundred meters? You know what a hundred meters is? A football field. If you got another meter, it's about a yard. And a hundred yards of football field. That's a hundred yards. That's a football field. Cross it out. One meter, one yard. Now that's ridiculous too. Uh, ten thousand meters, a thousand yards. And that's ridiculous. So once again, cross out the ridiculous, and you you'll. Be left with the answer. Uh, what do we have here? An object is two kilograms, and it weighs 19.6 newtons on Earth. What is its mass on Mars? Good question. Its mass won't change. So remember that weight changes, not mass. Mass. Your mass is the same everywhere, everywhere in the universe. 
a newton is equivalent to and that's my burner by the way don't worry about that what are you doing here which one do we pick it's the answer is kilograms times meters per second squared because f equals m a m is kilograms acceleration is meters per second squared so that's why a newton which is force equals mass times acceleration which is kilograms times meters per second squared uh, this is a good one you know with resultant two forces have a certain resultant when there's zero degrees it's the maximum when it's 180 it's a minimum so if you're going from zero to 90 you're going way, you're going from the maximum of zero uh, away from zero and towards 180 you, you don't quite get to it but you're going towards it um, which one has the greatest inertia very likely to be on your test somewhere inertia it's it, it only depends on mass this one's a tricky one you'll also have somewhere on the test you'll have something that says constant speed which means a equals zero which means f net equals zero and which means when you're dragging something at constant speed the applied force that's down here equals the friction so really if you want to find the applied force you have to find the friction now they mentioned rubber in on asphalt if, when a question talks about specifics like rubber and asphalt it means you got to go to the reference table and look at dry asphalt and rubber which is 0.67 is the coefficient of friction times the weight of 60 and you get 40. once again here's that question if you got to know constant acceleration for a v versus t is a straight slope but an increasing slope for distance versus time or displacement versus time oh boy this one's a good one this one's really pretty tricky you've got force mass and acceleration so it should make you think it f equals ma or f net excuse me equals ma so they give us an m and an a and we get 40 newtons but that is not the answer they want to know the friction force so you've got two forces that are 180 degrees 180 degrees so you have to subtract 50 minus what force would give you 40 50 minus only 10 would give you 40 why do we subtract because these are 180 force you always subtract forces when it's 180 well you're going to have a question with an object going in a circle you've got to know that the force and the acceleration are centripetal the velocity is tangential so that'd be the velocity what did they ask for the acceleration which is uh, centripetal east take a look at the picture all right let's see what else we've got i can get help you with here's another example um it's a trick question an astronaut's on the surface of the earth when it's four times the um, distance away from the earth what happens to the mass mass doesn't change just like in that question before mass weight changes you know if they ask for the weight four times away well it'd be one over four squared it would be one sixteenth the weight but that's not what they ask for the same mass the weight decreases by one sixteenth because one because one the top doesn't change so it's a one the bottom changes by four four squared is sixteen one sixteenth but they didn't ask you about weight they asked you about mass Here's another question about an object going in a circle where the force is always, and the acceleration is always centripetal, and the velocity is always tangential, and this angle is always 90 degrees. Now we've got a question about momentum and impulse. Oh, this is a good one. A circus, a 100-kilogram clown is fired at 15 meters per second from a 500-kilogram cannon. Well, you know there's going to be a recoil. The clown goes one way. The cannon goes the other way, and they both start at rest. So every region has a an object. Well, it has two objects that start from rest and are pushed apart. And so it's m1 v1 equals m2 v2. This is not on your reference table. It's very likely to be on your test. So the hundred kilogram clown moves in one direction at 15 meters per second. The cannon, 500 kilograms, moves in the other direction. Equal, but uh, so the momentum momentums are equal but opposite. So 1500, 15 times 100, is 500 v. So that's why v is three, because 500 times three is 1500, and 1500 equals 1500. 
Uh, what else? So this is a momentum question. You've got the only thing moving is the clay. So it's the only thing with momentum, six times one. And then they collide and stick. Well, then it becomes one body with the combined mass of the two bodies, one and three. So one times six is six. The combined masses are one plus three is four. Six is four times V. Divide both sides by four, and you get 1.5. So this will be on your test with two, but this is, well, no, that's not necessarily the case. It's a momentum question. The total momentum before the clay's momentum equals the total momentum after the combination of the steel and the clay combined with a single mass, a single velocity, and a single mom momentum. Total momentum before equals the total momentum after. Here's another one, a bullet, the only thing with momentum, mv. The bullet lodges itself in the big mass, m plus m, and th what they want is the velocity of the bullet in the block, which is v prime, and so I have to divide both sides by m plus m, and I'll find v prime. Okay, so this is, uh, what else can I do for you here? Again, we're not going to go all over all of them. That would take forever. I don't think you want to listen to me forever either. Here's a case where... Um, if you shoot something up at 90 degrees, it'll sp spend the greatest time in the air, which that should be pretty obvious. If you throw a softball up at 90 degrees, you're gonna, it's going to spend the greatest time in the air. Zero degrees, it won't spend any time in the air because it won't be a projectile. It'll be something rolling across the floor. So that's the smallest t, which is t equals zero. The greatest t would be throwing it straight up. So if you go from, what are you going for, 25? Two, let's so you increase the launch angle. Yep, uh, you're going to get a greater time in the air. Soccer ball. Well, we, we've gone over this a lot. Vx equals v cosine theta. Why? Because it's horizontal, and vy is v sine theta for the vertical component. So just plug it in. Okay. Know that Vx is constant for all projectiles. Alrighty. This is a parabolic path for a projectile. What else? The acceleration due to gravity is always straight down. Acceleration due to gravity is always straight down. So is the force of gravity. Now, this is also on every single region. F equals K times X. You're told that the force on a spring is 5 and the stretch is 0.075. So plug it in. Divide by both sides by 0.075 meters. So, of course, if this was an extended response, part two questions, we'd substitute with units and answer with units. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Great question here, number six. Spring, well, now here's another F equals KX from the reference table. Substitute and solve. Wait a second, hold on. This is not an F equals KX. This is a potential energy question, but it's still pretty simple. It's just, this is a plug-in because we have the K, we have the X, and then we want the PE, so um, you square the X, Multiply by the K and take one half. That's pretty basic, right? Number eight, always on the regions, a conservation of energy question. Why is this conservation of energy? Objects drop from a building before striking the ground. It has the following speed, 12 meters per second. What is the gravitational potential energy? Well, how can I do that? I, I can't do MGH because they gave me M but not H. But I do know the speed and I can find the kinetic energy and the ke the kinetic energy at the bottom equals the potential energy at the top so you'll get a question like that somewhere so this is a relationship question great question we it's an electron and a proton so it's the this equation right here um the um the distance is halved so look what i did do the top of the equation is not changed so i put one the bottom is halved the half gets squared because this is squared. So one half squared is one fourth. And you multiply top and bottom by four to clear the fraction and you get quadrupled. Here's the third you'll have it a third law third law question. This applies a two point four newton force on that. So what's the force of B on A? It's also two point four newtons. This is one of those add and divide number three is one of those add and divide by two, you know, two charges side by side, touched and brought into contact, 
and separate it. So you add and divide by 2. Negative 2 plus negative 4, add them. Negative 6, divide by 2, neg negative 3. And number 4, what happens when something loses 2 electrons? Well, first of all, if it loses 2 electrons, this is, wait a second, hold on, I think I, the answer key is wrong because if it lost two electrons, it can't be negative. I'm going to check this answer. It's got to be, it's actually got to be this one right here. I have the wrong answer. That's funny. Oh, yeah, the answer key is wrong. Let me see if I'm reading it right. Uh, what is the net electrical charge on a magnesium ion that is formed when a neutral magnesium loses two electrons? Yep, that's wrong. This is actually four. It's not one, it is four. Because when you lose electrons, you become, let me clean up this mess. When you lose electrons, you become positive. So uh, the answer is uh, four is four. Okay, that's funny. Now this is on, this equation is on every regions. So it'll be on your regions. It's V equals W, W of a Q. W is potential difference and your reference table, I'm sorry, V is potential difference. And your reference table will tell you that. And so they give you a W of 1 joule and a Q of 1. 1 divided by 1 is simply 1, which is choice 1. Okay, a subatomic particle. Remember, all charges must be a multiple of that number. These two are too small because it's negative 20. This is 2 times uh, 1.6 is 3.2. Gravity. I think you know gravity is always attractive. Um, Let's see, O-U-T, that's number 10. Electrical field lines go out of the positive, O-U-T. T looks like a positive. And uh, let's keep going. Which which is a vector? Vectors have direction, see? Vectors have direction. This is another V equals W of a Q. 60 joules is the W. Q is 5. 60 divided by 5 is 12. All right, number four, in for negative, right? This is a negative charge, so the arrows go in. And that's why it's this one right here. Okay, here's a great question. It's relationship question. This is a, about resistance and length and area. So the length is doubled. So I double the top. Two is on the top. The area is halved. Two divided by one half is four. It's no longer r, but four r, because two divided by one half is four. This is the inverse relationship, resistance and current. Okay, let's see what else is here. Out of north into south, right? Out of north, arrows, magnetic arrows go out of north into south. And we're headed for the home stretch. All, uh, all uh, electromagnetic radiation, all light, all colors have the same speed, 3 times 10 to the 8. So radio waves have that speed and x-rays and gamma and uh microwaves let's see what else we got here 12. you're gonna have a snell's law question of course make sure you're in degrees so it's n1 this would be the first medium n1 and this is theta one like that right there n1 sine theta one equals n2 sine theta two and you substitute and solve and uh i think that's it that's all we got good luck show them the physics